Hokkaido is a northern island of Japan, abundant in natural beauty for four seasons. And foods from a large farmland and northern ocean make it a popular travel destination for both Japanese and international tourists. And the capital of Hokkaido is Sapporo. Sapporo is a city two million people live in the center of the economy and the hub of transportation in Hokkaido. The city is known for heavy snow it gets during the winter season and Sapporo hosted the Olympic Games in 1972. You can also access to major ski resorts such as Rustu, Niseko and Furano in a few hours from Sapporo. During your stay in Sapporo, you can enjoy this city with beautiful scenery and foods that are brought from the land and ocean of Hokkaido, being in the convenience of the big city just like Tokyo. Today I'd like to introduce you to my travel in Sapporo in snowy winter time. The most common way to fly to Sapporo is taking flight to New Chitose International Airport, which is located 45 kilometers, 27 miles southeast of Sapporo. The flight between Tokyo and Sapporo is one of the busiest routes in the world, and there are frequent flights by Japan's two major flag carriers and Air 2, Skymark from Haneda Airport, and other LCCs from Naita Airport. New Chitose Airport also has direct flights from other parts of Japan, such as Osaka and Fukuoka. If you are flying into from Asian countries, there are also daily flights from most of the major Asian cities in the winter time. Sapporo also has a small airport, which is much closer to the city center called Okadama Airport, but the flights you can take from there is limited to flights to other cities in Hokkaido and some more. If you prefer trains, you can also enter Sapporo by trains. In this case, you can take Tohoku Hokkaido Shinkansen to Shin Hakodate Hokuto Station near city of Hakodate and take limited express called Hokuto. The bullet train, Shinkansen's rail hasn't reached Sapporo yet, so it takes about 8 hours from Tokyo as of today. The train fare in regular class is a little less than 30,000 yen without any discount. You can consider the rail pass too. JRE South Hokkaido Rail Pass is 35,000 yen and covering the areas between Tokyo and Sapporo, including the ride on Shinkansen and Limited Express. So if you are going round trip by train and drop by different parts of South Hokkaido and Tohoku area, it's a great pass. Once you arrive near Chitose Airport, there are mainly two ways to get to the Sapporo city center by public transportation. Airport bus is operated by two companies, Hokuto Kotsu and Chuo Bus, and each of them has different timetable, so I was a little bit confused first, but four to five buses are running per one hour combined. You cannot make reservation for this route, so you can proceed to the counter on the arrival floor and get a ticket for your bus. You can use credit card at the counter. You can also skip the counter and proceed to the bus, but the payment method is different depends on the bus. The bus operated by Chuo Kotsu, you can use IC card such as Suica, but the bus operated by Hokuto Kotsu, you can use Visa Touch and other touch functions of a credit card instead of IC card. Either way, you touch twice when you get on and get off. The bus stop is located right behind the counter outside. The price is 1,300 yen to Sapporo city center and it takes about 70 minutes to Suskino and 80 minutes to Sapporo Station. If your hotel is near the bus stop, it's a good idea to take the bus from the airport. JR's train called Rapid Airport takes you from right under the airport terminal to Sapporo Station in about 40 minutes. This Rapid Airport is landing every 10 to 12 minutes and it's 1,150 yen one way. You can use IC card from other cities such as Suica or Pasmo in Tokyo and Ikoka from Osaka. But if you land Hokkaido and don't have one yet, you can get IC card of JL Hokkaido, which is called Kitaka. 
And you can use Kitaka in other major cities in Japan too. But IC card is only used around Sapporo, so when you do extensive travel in Hokkaido area, get a ticket or any rail bus such as JR Hokkaido Rail Bus. This time, I arrived by airplane from Tokyo and took rapid airport train to Sapporo city center. The airport and Sapporo have distance, so the weather can be different, especially in winter time. This day, there was a storm coming, and as the train approached to Sapporo station, crowd started to cast over the train. This car number four is a U seat, and it's a reserved seat. This is a Sapporo station. It's like a hub for many different trains going across the different part of Hokkaido. The Limited Express Ozora Farm bound for Kushiro. Let's get out of the station once and see outside. This is Sapporo station south entrance. And this side will go continue to the city center of Sapporo. Now I arrive at Sapporo station. Let's head to the hotel and drop luggage first. So I'd like to take subway, Nambok line from here to Susukino station for my hotel. Sapporo has full choice of hotels, and especially it has a lots of business hotels to premium business hotels. There are some major Japanese brand hotels such as Keio Plaza, Prince Hotel, and JR Tower Hotel connected to the JR station. Somehow, Sapporo hasn't had many major international brand hotels, especially luxury ones at this point. But after 2025, Marriott, Intercontinental, and Hyatt is going to open in Sapporo. There are so many choices of clean and convenient business hotels to mid-range hotels in Sapporo. Now I arrived in the Holiday Inn, Suskino. This time, I chose ANA Holiday Inn in Suskino area for the first night. I stayed here with the points I had, but even with paying with cash, it was about 6,500 yen or so per night without breakfast, which is about 45 US dollars. Nothing special, no public bus, no kind of new building, and no amazing breakfast maybe, but it's something really cozy uh, being a kind of big van hotel. Two clean. Disposable sleep pass. So there aren't many channels, but you can watch CNN on English too. There's a vending machine for the regular drink and beer and some alcohol drinks. It's, the price is actually not that high. The hotel was close to Suskino station, and it was very convenient to go out to eat and walk around the town. When such hotels in Sapporo, you see, most of the hotels are located in the area from Sapporo Station to Nakajima Park. Each area has different convenience. Sapporo Station is where the train to other parts of Hokkaido leaves, and you also have direct access to the airport. So when you arrive with big suitcases or have plans to go other parts of Hokkaido, it might be a good place to stay. If you like quiet and clean area, this along the Odori Street and between Sapporo Station has lots of hotels. It's more like an office area, so it's quiet environment. The merit of Odori area is you can take similar subways, so it's convenient when you travel to other parts of Sapporo by subways too. If you like to hang around at the night and like to stay closer to other crowd, Suskino is a good area to stay. You can walk out of your hotel and find lots of places to eat quickly. The only thing is, it's also like a night town, so you see those stores board of Red Light District on the back street. But no matter where you choose, it's not that far from the other areas. Sapporo Station to Suskino is actually walking distance and it's connected with a big underground street. You can either walk or take subways easily between these areas, so it might not that big matter which area to stay, as long as you are in the area. So if you are traveling during the snow season and using the public transportations, you might want to make sure to make, get the hotel near the train station or subways or underground entrance. So it's a little difficult to carry suitcases on this kind of rough street. When it's snowing in winter, it's difficult to carry suitcases on snow. If the snow is deep, 
it's just difficult. But if snow is start to melt, it can be really wet. So if you are staying in Sapporo during the winter time, it might help to get a hotel near the station or near the entrance to the underground. The holiday in I stayed was one or two minutes from Susukino station, so it was convenient. Next day was even worse storm, so I chose to stay at Hotel Gracely in the last minute. Hotel Gracely Sapporo is located right in front of the station and it's connected directly to the underground mall. I booked the night before and it was about 7,500 yen, which is about $52 with currency exchange rate, a night with breakfast. This is a Hotel Gracely Sapporo's single room. I stayed at two different places this time to find out the feeling of staying at different areas, but I really don't recommend to change hotels often. As a member of frequent forget of belongings during travel, it takes time just to make sure nothing is left in the room. Once you drop your luggage, it's time to explore Sapporo. In Sapporo, the major transportation method in the city is this subway. There are three lines. Namboku Line, Tozai Line, and Toho Line. Subway runs every 6 to 7 minutes in the daytime. How you get on subway is the same as other parts of Japan. If you purchase your ticket, you can insert the ticket at the gate, pick the ticket, and you insert again at the destination station. If you use IC cars such as Suika or Kitaka, you can touch when you enter the station gate and when you leave the station gate. All stations are made barrier-free and equipped with elevator from the ground to the platform. Sapporo also has a tram that runs like loop. In case you take tram, the price is flat rate of 200 yen. You get on the tram from behind and pay when you get off from the front, right next to the driver. You can use IC car too. Same for the bus, but in case you take bus with cash, you take a small paper ticket when you get on. This is to prove where you got on the bus. I recommend you to get IC card and keep it charged for easy process of using transportation in major cities in Japan. When it comes to the sightseeing of Sapporo, many of the attractions of Sapporo are various different styles of observation decks in the city or surrounding areas, and western style historical buildings, parks, and museums and exhibitions related to the history of Hokkaido. Some of them are in the walking distance in the city center, and many attractions are in the surrounding area that you can access by subways, trams, or bus. Some of them are in the same direction, and some of them are in the other side of the city, so it might help to do some planning to get around the city effectively. If you are visiting during winter time, you might also want to be ready that some attractions are closed. During my stay, unfortunately, many popular attractions such as ropeways and lift were closed due to the strong wind. Okay, maybe I should walk the other side. Hokkaido is about the history of the new development of the land and lots of technology from the United States were used for agriculture and farming. Between the TV tower and Sapporo station, there's a Sapporo clock tower. The clock tower used to be a building of Sapporo Agricultural College, which is a former form of current Hokkaido University. So this is Sapporo's clock tower, the, one of the most popular tourist attractions. It's often said it's also a disappointing attraction that Basically, this is it. And I remember I came here when I was in uh, elementary school and a kid, I thought it's just nice. But uh, I don't remember actually what I thought when I was a kid. I, but I think it's actually beautiful. In winter, it has lots of snow. And in summer, I'm sure it has lots of nice green and so beautiful. As people moved to Hokkaido and government developed the Hokkaido in the 19th century, Hokkaido put importance on farming to produce dairy products agriculture, fishing, and beer brewery as an industry. To help the development of Hokkaido, Sapporo Agricultural College was established with the help of faculty members from the United States, and in late 19th century, 
the clock tower was built. And this clock was made in New York for this clock tower and started to ring the standard time of Sapporo. One of the faculty member, Clark, became somehow famous in Japan. And the word he left, be gentleman, and boys be ambitious, became the iconic word showing the frontier spirit of Hokkaido. It seems most of the tourists left without entering inside, but there's a small exhibition space that you can learn about the history of this clock tower and Sapporo. The entry fee was 200 yen and 1080 yen if you go with the TV tower. Another western style building that enlightened the city of Sapporo is Hokkaido's government building. This is Hokkaido's government building. It's a nice red brick building, but actually it's drawing. It's under renovation, it seems. All the bars are like where the roof used to stop or something. But they have trees. Sapporo TV Tower is a symbol of Sapporo that was built in 1957. You can go up to the observation deck by the elevator. Just me in the elevator, and it's so beautiful. I think I can have a good time. Even though the rays of the surrounding buildings, and it's not like you can see everything in Sapporo. The view of Odori Park and seeing a ski jump facility in the distance makes you feel that you came to the northern capital of Sapporo. For the observatory, you can also check JL Towers Observatory connected to JL Towers in Sapporo Station. Sapporo is also surrounded by mountains and you can see the dynamic view of Sapporo from mountains too. Two other famous spots to see Sapporo is Moiwayama, that you can go up with ropeway, and Okurayama, which has a ski jump facility which is used in the Olympic game. You can go up there by lift. Unfortunately, both of them were closed this time. I arrived at Maruyama Koen Station and it seems Hokkaido Jingu is here. So maybe exit 3 or 2 or 1. Mariyama bus terminal. When you go to Okunayama Shante, there's a bus leaving from here. This is also a shrine, right? If you are looking for walking in the nature of Hokkaido, you can visit Mariyama Park, a park located in the west of Sapporo city center, and there's the Mariyama Zoo and the Hokkaido Jingu Shrine. There are lots of parks around Sapporo, but this Mariyama Park has easy access from subway station. For the park, Moerenuma Park is also a popular park which you can see the wide open spaces of Hokkaido. If there is a snow like this, there is no problem. But if this kind of place like looks shiny and brown, it can be really slippery. So, Please be careful when you walk. When you walk in Sapporo, definitely it's a must have to have the glove and the scarf. And I got this kind of cap. There's also zoo in this part, but I'm kind of debating how far is it in this snow. I got Hokkaido's banana milk coffee. It's Say 0 0.4 degrees, so it's not that cold, but it feels much colder than how it looks in the numbers.
In the evening, a good place to go is Suskino. Suskino is one of the commercial center of Sapporo and more known as an entertainment and a nightlife district. The board of the whiskey brand born in Hokkaido, Nikka, is the symbol of the Suskino traffic light. There are lots of dining options here, so it's a place you visit at least once during your stay in Sapporo. Very dry smell, so you do like this. It comes off cleanly, it doesn't look that wet. One reason to visit Sapporo is the food of Hokkaido. Hokkaido is like brand for Japanese people. Any areas can be a brand in Japan, but Hokkaido is the one you see the most. Hokkaido is a land of agriculture, farming for dairy products, and surrounded by northern ocean with lots of seafood. Now that you are in Hokkaido, food is the important factor of Sapporo travel. In the cold weather of Sapporo, something I really wanted to try is a bowl of Sapporo ramen. When you like to try Sapporo ramen, there is a perfect spot in Suskino area called Ramen Yokocho. So in this ramen yokocho, 17 or 18 ramen shops here in ramen yokocho. It's like only one minute from Suskino traffic light, so it's very convenient come place to come and you can choose your favorite ramen. There are many ramen shops in this small alley and you can choose from the favorite ramen store. I chose this store called Haruka, located by the entrance of the ramen yokocho. There are different opinions about what the Sapporo ramen is and there is no clear one definition. But to me, the image of Sapporo ramen is a dark miso ramen with butter and corn on it. It was very good and warming up. Somehow, most of the international tourists were ordering spicy miso ramen, so that might be more trending menu. In case you visit ramen shop or seafood bowl shop, many stores had a sign, cash only. So you might want to make sure to carry some cash of Japanese yen. So we have such a city-style Seiko Mart too. Next day, as I didn't have breakfast at Holiday Inn, I walked to Nijo oh, Market. So this is a Nijo Market, kind of morning market, a little morning market in the city of Sapporo. So there are bigger ones in outside the city, but this one's much easier to visit lots of kind of graphic which we don't see much in Japan. <laughs> Maybe it's like a dangerous dangerous market, I don't know. So this is a Nijo market. Looks like it's 9 a.m. so probably it's a busy time already finished. And some stores closed already. Let's see. Many kind of seafood shop that you can purchase and also you can eat. Looks like this is a main street there are lots of people. It's a small market in the middle of the city that you see some seafood shops and restaurants that you can eat seafood board called Kaisendon. The price standard of seafood board is almost not existing so it's difficult to find a place to eat but I visited this one store in front of the Nijo market. I ordered a thousand seven hundred yen small bowl of the seafood with ikura, scallops, and salmon. It came with a cup of the soup with lots of shrimps. I asked if I can eat shrimp, but he said you can eat if you want, but bite very well and usually nobody eat it. I saw travelers uh, ordering very expensive uni bowl, which is a uh, sea urchin in English. The bowl was more than 5,000 yen, which is like 35 US dollars. When I visited Hokkaido's countryside in May, I was told by a shop person that uni bowl is starts only from June, so mostly uni season is in summer, and you probably get a better quality if you visit Hokkaido in summer. The seafood bowl is like a mystery world and price can be skyrocketed. So it might be good to enjoy exploring the different shops and find your favorite bowls. I just ate at the restaurant behind here, here in front of the Nijo market. It was 1,700 yen for a small bowl and I think for the 
looking at this location, maybe it's not that bad. I think it's, the taste was good. And another thing you might want to get in Japan is this kind of heating pad. This is the one you just open up the packet and uh, it's heated up for about 12 hours. And this is almost a must item when you come to Sapporo. And you can get anywhere in like a drugstore for a really reasonable price. Something. So in Sapporo, something you definitely might want to have is also a cap. It's the snow is kind of accumulating on my head, and it's very cold. It's really, I need that. And also very important to cover your ears because it's very cold. But actually. Seafood is one of the most difficult things to find a good one, and price can be no limit in the tourist spots or a big city like Sapporo. So I thought I'm gonna seek the place Sapporo local people go. I decided to go to the local sushi chain. Shiroi Koibito Park is also from this station. It was three minutes walk from the last stop of Tozai Line, Miyanozawa Station, so it's easy to access too, even for tourists. And I did see some foreign tourists here. I arrived at Miyanosawa Station. So let's go to the sushi restaurant. Looks like a very popular place, I hope. There won't be too long line. It's like a nice suburb of Sapporo area. This one, very close. There are three major Hokkaido sushi chains, and among them, Nemuro Hanamaru and Toriton already have branch in Tokyo, so I chose one called Nagoya Kate in Hassam area. Many of the menu in today's recommendation was from other parts of Japan, like Kyushu. I was tempted, but I came from Tokyo all the way, so I only ordered something from Hokkaido. Sushi was good and fun. Okay, it wasn't something amazing like I lost words, but it was definitely good quality. It was also a good find that I get similar quality at those Hokkaido sushi chain's restaurant in Tokyo for almost the same price. If you have a big budget, there are tons of places to go, but the store was easy going for going by myself, and I think it's good for a big group or a family with children too. If you are staying long in Sapporo, it might be fun to try three different sushi chain restaurants from Hokkaido. The last one I tried is Jingiskan, which is like a mutton barbecue. There are many shops around Suskino, and something easy to go in, and popular is Sapporo Beer Garden. So windy. <laughs> cool. Very nice atmosphere. This is Sapporo Beer Garden, that where you can eat the Jingiskan Nabe Kana Pot. Oh, oh, it's more like yakiniku. So, I have a reservation for 30. So, let's see what the Jingiskan, the Sapporo's special food is like. So, it's up by 5.30 and the museum shop closes 7.30. So, it looks like there's a museum. And you can try some Sapporo beer that are crafted here. And restaurant is in another building, it's a, and there are some museum shop of Sapporo beer. This beautiful building is a museum, and you can also try the beer of Sapporo beer. Next to the museum building, there's a hall you can eat Genghis Khan. In the main hall called Kessel Hall, you can eat the all-you-can-eat buffet, looking at the big brewery machine. This is the Genghis Khan's all-you-can-eat buffet. And so first, this vegetable and some meat comes. Ah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. This is the beer called Sapporo Five Star. It's the original beer of Sapporo beer. And you can only have it in this Sapporo beer garden. Jingiskan is a mutton barbecue that you cook on the table. 
Mutton is not something commonly eaten across Japan, but somehow in Hokkaido, this is a popular local food. The taste was good, just like barbecue and nothing special flavor of ram. It's one of the top tourist spots in Sapporo, so it was easy to go in. But I felt a bit out of place being myself, so it might be a fun place to come with friends or family in a big group and enjoy the atmosphere. If you ask for more taste, it might be better to go to the authentic small restaurant in Suskino area, because real good rum is mind blowing. It was a really fun experience. On the way back from Sapporo Beer Garden, there is a shuttle bus, but I decided to take JR train. And it was a big mistake because the train wasn't running often and it was delayed about 10 to 15 minutes. Four station, one station next to the Sapporo. And from here, you can walk to the Sapporo Beer Garden too. Obviously, it was better to take the shuttle bus from the beer garden, but Somehow, the time I was waiting at this platform is the most memorable moment of this Sapporo trip. If you are visiting Sapporo in winter, there are similar things you might want to pay attention if it's not too late. In winter, Sapporo can be very cold. With the wind, it can be colder than how it looks on the temperature. As I mentioned in the hotel section, it's better to get hotels near the station or underground mall. The underground is continuing from Sapporo station to all the way to Suzukino station. If you see the Google map and go closer, you can see the underground in the red. And also, uh, grab is a must have item. It's really difficult to walk without it and my hand will be freezing without it. So it's better to have some kind of card that you can touch your smartphone in case you take photos of them. I hope I could show you how the support trip would be like during the winter time. It was a very enjoyable trip that I could see lots of snow. Thank you for watching. Have a great trip to Japan. Have a great week until the next video.